Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Hi, I'm it's Robbie Rhino and in today's video I'll be going over the Stingray which is an era 2 light tank for the Western Alliance in the Cold War game mode and the Stingray comes after the Sheridan which was a lot of fun to play with its ATGMs and different choice of ammunition but this tank is also a lot of fun as well with a fantastic 105mm single shot gun and this is the last era 2 Western Alliance light tank before you get into era 3 with the Stingray 2. So in today's video I'll be telling you all about the Stingray and I have three gameplays for you to demonstrate how this tank performs in gameplay. Um, the first two replays are stock uh, replays in terms of the gun um, but the last replay is the fully upgraded 105mm gun so I'll be able to show you the differences which are minor but I'll tell you the differences in just a little bit. I'll also be showing you my commander and equipment setup should you wish to set up your stingray like I have in today's video and yeah the gameplay is I hope to try and demonstrate how I play a kind of hybrid light tank medium tank gameplay this has the sort of concealment of a light tank but also the mobility of a light tank it's the size of a medium tank and it kind of has a, a medium tank kind of gun in terms of its alpha damage and its sniping capabilities so let's get stuck straight into the statistics of the stingray then so fully upgraded you will have 2400 hit points which is 200 more than you'll see in the first two replays as i am stuck in those two um, in terms of the view range you have 540 meters which is actually quite nice and your mobility is also very good as well as is most things in Cold War in Era 2 especially. Uh, you have a 550 horsepower a diesel engine I believe which gives you a 27.23 power to weight ratio. You can go 67.6 kilometers an hour forwards which although isn't the best is still pretty good and a 16.1 kilometers an hour reverse speed so you do have to bear in mind that that is quite slow so if you want to get out of trouble you might want to back up into positions or yeah just try and uh, go forwards as much as possible and reverse out of trouble is going to take you a while and you might get torn to shreds. In terms of the traverse speeds though it's quite good news at 44 degrees a second traverse speed on the hull and 46 degrees a second traverse speed on the turret. So now we come to the nice feature of the Stingray which is the gun. You have a 105mm gun and that's both the stock gun and the fully upgraded gun. Uh, the only differences are a little bit of difference in alpha damage, penetration and uh, yeah, like 7 meters a second in shell velocity on the standard run. So not too much of a distant uh, difference there. Uh, but in the first two replays, you'll see me use the stock 105mm, which has 460 alpha damage on its standard APF SDS rounds and 460 alpha damage on its premium heat rounds and 570 alpha damage on its nice HE rounds and the penetration values on those are 347 millimeters for the standard rounds, 430 millimeters of heat penetration and 250 millimeters of HE so the HE can be very useful against other light tanks and lightly armored plates on medium tanks and it is nice to make use of them however as I'll tell you in a bit, you do run the risk of running out of ammunition quite a lot with the Stingray. So the fully upgraded 105mm, which you'll see me using in the third and final replay of the video, you have a boost to your penetration on your standard APF SDS rounds to 395mm of penetration, which is very nice for a light tank in era 2. And you still have the same 430mm heat rounds as your premium option. And in terms of the penetration, you have 250 millimeters again for your HE rounds. Uh, but this time, your alpha damage on the HE has gone up by 20 to 590 alpha damage. In terms of the alpha damage change to the standard rounds, you get 20 more alpha damage on the fully upgraded gun with a slightly reduced rate of fire. But you still have an improved DPM, which is 3513.6 should you choose to use um, the heat rounds uh, standard rounds I should say and 3367 should you choose to fire the heat rounds so um, as heat's largely ineffective against space armor and explosive reactive armor I choose to carry a few 
uh, HE rounds and mainly the standard APF SDS rounds for the uh, better shell velocity but also for the um, higher alpha damage. In terms of the shell velocity of the rounds, it's 1508 meters a second on the standard rounds, 1173 for the heat rounds, which is actually quite good for heat, and 736 meters a second for the HE. So if you're firing your HE, bear in mind they're going to be about twice as slow as the standard rounds, so you have to adjust your lead accordingly, but 1508 meters a second on the standard rounds is very nice for sniping at mid to long ranges and with the stock gun you still have 1501 meters a second on the standard round so it only changes by seven as you get the fully upgraded 105 millimeter so with the fully upgraded gun you have an 8.2 second base reload a 2.1 second aim time which is nice and a 0.33 accuracy and when you combine that with a nine skill commander or at least a sort of six to nine skill commander and some equipment you get that down to a very nice level you also have some good gun depression with the stingray at eight degrees of gun depression um, and 18 degrees of gun elevation however you can only carry 32 rounds of ammunition and with the relatively decent dpm of this tank i found that i run out of ammunition quite frequently so you do have to be quite choosy in tight situations of who you're going to fire at and try to make the most of your rounds um, in terms of the armor um, in typical kind of light tank fashion there really isn't any armor to speak of it's 25 millimeters the strongest turret armor upper plates 19 millimeters on the lower plates 38 millimeters with 12 millimeters of side armor so that draws to an end the first replay where we pick up a nice profit doing just shy of 7k direct damage 764 assistance and we get three kills and an all-round decent game in a stock tank so now we're going to head on over into the second replay and i'll talk you through my commander and equipment setup and then the gameplay so then we're now here on Mannheim in the second replay of the video and I'll just continue to talk about my equipment and commander setup and I'll tell you how that affects my statistics of the Stingray and then we'll get talking about the gameplay and how I try and get the most out of the Stingray. So in terms of my equipment I run advanced concealment, gun stabilizer and traction system. I try and improve my concealment because I am a light tank, I want to try and stay hidden for as long as possible, use the foliage to avoid the true vision system and flank my enemies, get into some sneaky positions to try and spot the opponents and stay hidden when I'm firing. Gun stabilizer because I want to improve my accuracy because I play this like a hybrid light uh, medium sniping tank and it's very good at mid to long ranges when you do use a gun stabilizer and traction system. Um, because I want to keep up with the rest of the light tanks that are faster, things like the BMP, things like that, and it just means that I'm able to outrun heavies that want to ram you and other light tanks that are chasing you. In terms of my commander skills then, I run Sixth Sense, Born Leader, Rapid Loading, Steady Aim, Snapshot, Situational Awareness, Camouflage Expertise, Muffled Shot and Green Thumb. I'm trying to make this the sneakier sort of sniper, so gun handling skills, camouflage skills, rapid loading to improve my DPM, and situational awareness. I'm able to outspot the medium and the heavy tanks and get all of that lovely juicy assistance. So with those uh, commander and equipment setups, I now have a view range of 600 meters and a still concealment rating of 211 meters, which is really, really nice. And if you're not spotted, by the naked eye you can stay hidden quite nicely and even fire and stay hidden when you're firing through foliage and it's really nice to sit back and snipe without being detected and uh, sometimes people aren't looking for you and you can farm some lovely juicy assistance like I'm doing at the start of this battle at tanks that are crossing into position. And I get there so quickly because of the traction system that has improved my mobility to 79.64 kilometers an hour forwards, 21.23 kilometers an hour backwards, and my traverse speeds have improved to 48.4 degrees on the hull and 47.98 degrees a second on the turret, meaning that I'm able to circle enemies using auto aim should I have to and not worry about sort of missing my shells when I'm circling tanks. And it also means that I'm a 
easy to sort of acquire tanks really quickly and snapshot like tanks that come in around me and I don't sort of fire behind them so that's a really nice um, improvement to the tank. In terms of the gun I now have a 2 second aim time which is more than enough and a 0.23 accuracy. This thing is laser accurate and it plays a sniping role very well. I now have a base reload of 7.08 seconds and a DPM of 4070 using my APF SDS rounds and 3900 should I be using the heat rounds. But like I said, I just use the APF SDS rounds for the higher DPM and the higher shell velocity and that's the way I play this tank. So in terms of uh, the gameplay that I try and uh, get out of this tank I used to I usually try to get into position position early doors uh, spot where the enemies are going to give myself and my teammates a view of the battlefield and uh, try and see where the enemies are going and adjust my position accordingly and with the mobility enhancements I've made with the traction system I'm able to do that quite nicely able to get a few early sniping shots off you don't have to over sort of expose yourself into positions what that are too dangerous to spot the enemies and when you do fire through foliage and at mid to long ranges you are staying hidden so I kind of spot early doors then fall back ever so slightly and try and catch uh, tanks that are moving into location changing location and just supporting my heavy tanks and medium tanks that get to the battle a little bit later than me of course with a light tank the later that you play as I'm having a bit of a physics moment in the background here stuck underneath this bridge which I eventually get out of um, yeah I'm able to um, use my mobility my concealment rating and view range to get around the battlefield uh, the last stages of games and try to affect the outcome and this tank is a very good tank for fighting one-on-one -on -one versus at the end of the game especially against heavy tanks and medium tanks because you're faster than them you have usually a sort of better view range better concealment and yeah you can outspot your opponents and pick them off sort of one by one as they try and chase you around the map so it's a very good tactic to use at the end of the battle and throughout the battle i try and play this like a sort of sniping medium tank uh, using its concealment trying to stay hidden as long as possible conserving my hit points for when i might need them and i spot out enemies when they are sort of not being able to be spotted by my friendly tanks or when I have a sort of wall behind me that is firing maybe say on top of the hill like here on Mannheim I'd go forward down there and spot should they not be spotted but because of the view range sort of distances are so big in Cold War that the Stingray is more than capable enough of spotting tanks at long distances especially now with my commander and equipment setup of 600 meters so in terms of the gameplay in the background here on Mannheim we've already picked up uh, 3.8k direct damage and 1000 assistance and we're down by two tanks and I'm just trying to get into a position where I'm able to um, flank these heavy tanks and that medium tank that are sitting around sort of G4 and 5 I'm going to use my mobility to come around here, go around the side and see if I can get some flanking shots up here on this bridge or on the ridge to the right of me. Um, you do have to be careful in the steering wheel because of the really poor armor that if people are firing ATGMs or HE you're going to lose a substantial amount of damage and it doesn't take long for those 2400 hit points to go but if you're able to conserve your hit points and play a, a sort of sneakier role then you can make this tank work very well. Like I said, in terms of the um, ammo, you do run out of ammo very frequently because you don't always want to um, hold your fire. You're going to have times when you're going to want to fire to try and take out tanks like that T-72 there. But fortunately, he's taken out by our friendly FE-4211. And now we have this FE-4211 coming up here. I'm waiting for as long as possible before firing into his tracks. So I'm trucking him on the incline there so hopefully he can't get his gun down and now we're gonna race back to the cap as we are getting uh, capped out I'm just gonna try and wiggle a little bit to try and avoid fire from that FE4211 I was kind of expecting him to come up on the bridge and farm me as I went down to um, as I'm coming here now to reset the cap but fortunately for us it looks like we got away and we didn't take any damage so this is where conserving your hit points is really useful I now have enough hit points to go in and take you know, a good two, three, maybe even four shots if I'm lucky and they uh, low roll some of their shots and depending what actually is capping. I notice there's uh, a platoon on the enemy team so that's going to be quite a dangerous end of game scenario if they're coordinating well. But I'm going to come in now from 
the sort of south side of uh, our capture circle and try and reset and take out and I'm just hoping whatever's in here isn't on full health. Uh, it's this BMP-1. Uh, fortunately it looks like we are able to juke him out there with our good traverse speeds. I'm not sure if that BMP-1 was sort of paying attention when I came round but because of the great DPM all I have to do is carry on going around in a circle and if he's auto aiming or firing ATGMs it's going to be hard for him to hit us that close and when we're going this flat, uh, this fast so in those kind of scenarios always keep him moving is the best scenario um, if people are trying to circle you you have to free aim to try and shoot them and this tank's very good for that because of the traverse on the hull and the turret and if you are circling enemies you'll find that a lot of players will not free aim they'll use auto aim and by the chance by the time they fired your tanks already moved forward and because of the sort of latency with the server they will miss their shots or to aiming when you're circling them so just keep moving and you should be able to evade fire so we've reset the cap now it's now two against three um, i feel really sorry for our heavy tank who's putting up a good fight there i'm trying to get to him as quickly as possible but i want to try and get into a position where i'm able to stay hidden and a place where i'm able to escape um, should our friendly heavy tank get taken down I want to be able to escape and re-stealth and come in from a different angle of approach I noticed that that tank is now going to be a one shot for me unless I roll dramatically low unfortunately he takes out our friendly FE 4211 but that uh, friendly FE 4211 did put that tank on a one shot for me so very thankful to him for putting up a good fight at the end of the battle we're going to come up to the rear of this fe 4211 we know where he was it looks like i set him on fire there because i don't think i actually rolled high enough to kill him in one shot we're going to put some smoke down because we are detected from behind us and that will stop the enemy um i think it's an m60a2 who's firing an hgm at us from being able to fire through the smoke we now notice that this m60a2 is here I think that he spotted me, he was looking the other way actually, but we do try and wait as long as possible undetected before we get to a position where when I auto aim a shot I feel pretty comfortable that I'm going to hit. Now it's a case of who fires first and fortunately we come round, we re-stealth, come round from that side of the rock, snapshot into the M60A2 and the good penetration holds up well there on the standard rounds and we take that one down for the team. So in that game we finish with a 6.6k direct damage. Uh, 1400 assistance, 4 kills, 1443 base experience points, finish second on the team behind that FE4211 and make a nice profit of 140,000 silver. So now we're going to head on into the third replay. So we're now into the third and final replay of the video and if you haven't noticed already I'm actually still stuck in terms of my gun in this replay. I did say that this would be the fully upgraded gun in action, but that was actually the replay previously. Um, no big deal. I was obviously um, really tired when I said that at the start of this recording. Um, so yeah, I wonder if you guys noticed. It was purely, um, purely by design. I was just keeping everyone on their toes, you see. And yeah, it definitely wasn't by accident. Um, so anyway, Redshire for the Stingray it's a fantastic map for the stingray and it allows me to come up here on this ridge line and spot out tanks at the start of the battle that are in the middle of the battlefield and also tanks that are heading over to that very typical heavy brawling location directly in front of me there on the east of the map in sort of E, F, 9 and 0 um, and you have fantastic sniping shots here that tanks that sort of um, expose themselves on that ridge line like the FE4211 is doing on that ridge line we didn't go for the penetrating shot there because from this distance with APF SDS rounds they're going to lose penetration over distance and I just wouldn't be able to penetrate the FE4211 from here even if he had his rear side to us there's a, a very small chance I'm going to be able to penetrate him so I'm trying to track him on that ridge line for my friendly tanks and that's a great way of getting assistance however doing that kind of thing you do run the risk of running out of ammunition at the later stages of the battle we're getting shot now from behind us there are tanks that are coming in from the one line so we're going to turn our attention to trying to snipe tanks that are coming in here and push their advance towards our cap circle and this position is a great uh, a great position for tank destroyers if you're playing sort of World War II as well um, or just light tanks and medium tanks that like to snipe 
a lot of tanks like to go where you can see them congregating on that 9-0 line of that brawling location but you can be sneaky and try and get to the capture circle by going down the one line and I'm just trying to stop the enemy tanks from doing it here and you're going to be seeing the fantastic gun in action a really nice shell velocity of over 1500 meters a second meaning that I'm not having to give too much lead at all the penetration is quite decent for an era 2 light tank however like I said just a minute ago you do struggle at longer ranges penetrating the more heavily armoured tanks or tanks that have a lot of spaced armour um, if you were to carry a few heat rounds for longer range engagements the shell velocity is still good at just over 1100 meters a second however you do have to um, bear in mind that it won't do so well against uh, spaced armor explosive reactive armor that kind of thing so we're just going to sit here for a while as you can see we are undetected of course we're visible on top of this hill so you do have to bear that in mind as soon as i hear those atgms in the sky i try and back down or try and move a bit just in case they're aiming at me but i'm firing firing through all of this foliage at quite a quite a sort of a mid to close range engagement close range engagement here and I wasn't spotted just until that light tank came in the field there. We get a nice shot there into that heavy tank, that MOBAT, set him on fire and our T62 medium tank finishes him off. We pop our smoke there and that's one thing I have forgot to mention up until now is that I use the smoke consumable. I seem to be using it as standard now on many of the sneakier light tanks. Um, purely as a reason to stop ATGMs and to get out of dodge if I get myself into a dangerous situation because with the DPM and the high alpha damage in Cold War 2200 uh, like you're seeing in the replay in the back or 2400 like you saw in the previous replay the hit points don't go very far in Cold War so you want to try and preserve them for as long as possible so now we're getting lit up quite often so I'm just going to fall back ever so slightly um, going up this hill but I am keeping my gun pointed behind me should anything get spotted and I'll be able to lock on with a sort of snapshot and return fire if anything shoots at me. Um, but we get sort of re-stealthed and then we're going to dip down into this little ridge line here, see if we can get any side shots into the heavies that are on the zero line. And we're just going to keep trying to push over ridge by ridge, not overextending and trying to get shots in where we can at tanks like that Centurion 9 who didn't spot us there. We weren't firing, firing through foliage and we still didn't get spotted. And of course he probably knows which direction it's coming from, but he might not see us in time for us to get a second shot in. However, he is reversing behind that rock and unfortunately we miss without a second shell. I found the gun on the Stingray is actually quite reliable if you do let it fully aim. On the move it can it can be a little bit sort of derpy um, if you run a running gun skill that will obviously help with the accuracy on the move. Of course you're going to have to weigh up the benefits of having camouflage and if you're more of a sort of aggressive player who doesn't want to play a sort of supporting role or a spotting role at the start of the game you might consider dropping some of the camouflage perks and if you don't believe in concealment in Cold War although I think it's still necessary and really useful if you don't believe in that um, some more gun handling skills and things like that would serve you really well so we're looking for a shot at that FE4 to 11 I decide not to fire because that thing's just insane for era 2 however this Centurion 9 is coming up on this hill and I'm going to be trying to get shots at this Centurion 9. We unfortunately miss his hole and just track the Centurion 9. However, that means that if we do track him again, we will lock him in place. Um, we do get a penetrating shot through the tracks. We don't track him, uh, but it looks like that BMT, BMP2 on our team fired an HGM and completely wrecked that Centurion 9. I think ATGMs are becoming like artillery in, cold, uh, <laughs> artillery in World War II. A lot of people hate them. Um, but I find them really fun to play and when you get to grips with firing them they can be really useful but it's also nice to play a tank like the Stingray where you just have to focus on that one gun, the single fire gun and play a, a more typical kind of play style. So we're spotted here in the middle of the field, I'm just using the smoke to try and uh, get re-stealthed, block my advance and come out um, a little bit faster so I try and reverse up behind the smoke and get a bit of a head start going through the smoke so that if they are still pre aiming at me that they might miss their shot and now we're going to be going around isolating tanks uh, we're now, um, it's now 2 against 1 basically, it's uh, 3 against 6 now we'll make that 2 against 6 in our favour and we're going to come around isolate tanks with our hit points left it doesn't matter if we take a shot or two 
and we're going to try and get as much damage out of the end of this game as possible. Um, just looking around for my next victim and hopefully it'll be this Sheridan. Of course that has a nasty ATGM that could have my rack me but I'm trying to push my damage uh, numbers in the Stingray as high as possible so I'm going to go over here and try and fight off this Sting, this uh, Sheridan I should say. And yeah, all round the Stingray has been a very fun tank to play. It's a very capable tank. It's yeah, it's like a hybrid between a light tank and a medium tank, and I thoroughly enjoy it. You are a big sort of boxy light tank, but you do have a great gun and great concealment, and that brings to an end that game there where we pick up 7.1k direct damage and 1053 assistance. And that's a victory where we finish with two kills in the MVP slot, making a profit of 147 thousand silver and that's just a second class showing how well people play this tank so thank you all so much for watching and thank you all so much for your support and until next time i'll see you on the battlefield and bye for now